What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be having some fun with Auto Park. Now, if you guys haven't seen my recent videos, I've been making a lot of reviews on non-Tesla EVs and all of those new EVs seem to have some kind of self-parking system. But what I've figured out is that most of them are terrible. As you can see here, And of course here. And sometimes they're pretty good, like here. But all of them seem to have some little quirks. And I wanna talk about those quirks and how Tesla system really doesn't have those and is only getting better. So let's start with a wide open parking lot, which is basically what we're in right now, at least to this section of the parking lot, it's pretty wide open. There's some cars over there, some cars way over there. But for the most part, this is pretty wide open. You would think this would be the easiest possible situation for all of these self-parking systems. Unfortunately, GM's system actually requires there to be other vehicles or a wall for it to properly park itself, which I think is absurd. Really what I think park assist should be for is for people who just want perfect parking. It's okay, there's people out there that just aren't that good at parking. It's just not one of their strong suits and systems like this will create a safer environment for not only the people parking, but also the vehicles around the people parking and the quality of the park job if there are no vehicles around. So in my opinion, these systems should be able to do any parking situation. And what you're gonna notice here as we're driving, which is one of my favorite things about the Tesla system, is it gives you these renderings of all the different available parking spots. Whether they're actual lined spots or not, it will still give you the option to park in them if it's you know a wide enough opening for a car. So it's showing me all of these parking spots. And I mean, it's rendering already. I think there's like 16 spots maybe on the screen at this given moment. And not all the systems work like this. Some systems you have to drive so slow. And if you're too far over to one side or the other, it won't show you spots. It's so precise and like fiddly that it just makes it almost unusable in my opinion. Whereas this just shows you every possible open spot. You can just tap one, any of them actually and it will navigate and park you in that spot. Now, one thing to keep in mind is some of the other self-parking systems come standard or free with the vehicle, whereas this auto park system is tied to full self-driving, which costs a lot of money up front if you wanna pay that way, or $99 a month if you wanna do the subscription fee. So this is not a free system, but it's the best system. Let's pick one that's a little ways ahead there so you can see how it will navigate. Vehicles at a stop here, we can go ahead and hit start and we'll start auto parking here. So it's gonna give you this little line to let you know kind of what the progress is and which direction it's headed. And sometimes it will take you over the line, right? As long as there's no other vehicles around you, if that is the easiest way for it to kind of level itself out. And we'll talk about a few of the cons of the auto park system at the end, but as you'll see in this video, it does a really good job, I'd say 99% of the time. And just like that, we're done. We're parked, backed in of course, it only backs in. All right, so now let's test it if we have more of a crowded parking lot here with just vehicles on both sides of the spot and then vehicles just on one side or the other. So we'll go ahead and drive here. And as you can see, we've got spots on either side. There's a car in both of these and then there's this wide open spot here. So we can tap that, come to a stop, go ahead and hit start. And boom, there we are. That person over there was just taking a picture of the cyber truck. But yeah, I mean, as you can see with the cameras here, I mean, it parked us perfectly in this spot around both of these cars, no issue. If we go ahead and swipe over here, you can see we are dead center of these lines, no issues. So works great between cars there. Let's uh, move down here next to this Model S and get another test here with just one car on the side. 
and we'll go ahead and do this one right in front here. So this is with just a car on one side or the other, which again, some of these systems cannot do this. They say you need, you know, surrounding cars or walls or two cars even in some cases. There we go, nice and easy. All right, I'm here in the worst parking lot of all time and that is at Costco. And uh, it's actually not that busy today, but you know, you can see on the screen like how many cars are through here. People tend to uh, park all crazy. That's a tight parking spot right there next to this uh, cart rack here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and park in that spot to see how it does with that large thing on the side there that isn't a car. As you can see, if we go full screen, it is rendering it as another blob. So it should work the same. But there also was a person back there, so maybe they'll have issues if they walk past. No, I'm doing okay. Again, this is vision only. This is just using cameras. No radar, no LIDAR, no USS, nothing. It's freaking perfect every time. Look at this. It just doesn't get any better than that. All right, so I found a kind of interesting situation and I wanna see if it even recognizes these as parking spots and it doesn't look like it does. We're going well under the speed limit and it's just not even showing up. These are, I think, technically parking spots. They're probably meant for like, if you have a boat or something, you can pull up to the spot. So that didn't work, dang it. It's hoping that uh, we could see kind of a more non-traditional situation. I know a lot of the spots that I've been showing have pretty clear painted lines. So I kind of want to find like a faded parking lot, see how well it does without real defined lines and if it can still do as good of a job at parking us. All right, here at Dairy Queen, I found some diagonal spots. So let's see if the parking thing even shows these as spots it can do. Oh, I did see one. Let's, uh, let's swing it around and come back because I think it might not even be recognizing them as spots. Hmm. Yeah, it's not seeing them as spots, even though they've got very clear painted lines. All right, well, it does not work in diagonal spots. Your all's experience may vary. Like I said, I've had it park me in a slightly slanted spot before, but it seems like for the most part, it's not gonna work in diagonal spots, even with very clear painted lines yet. All right, I finally found a perpendicular spot. It took me forever, but uh, Skyline Chili came in clutch with the perpendicular spot. Now there's not a person on the front side, there's only a person on the back, but should be able to see it putting us in a parallel spot nonetheless. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Okay, so it shows us these two different spots. Let's go ahead and have it put us in the spot in front of the tree here just to see how well it kind of centers there. So we'll go ahead and hit start. And we can see here how it's giving us a nice kind of path of what we're gonna do here. I'd be fascinated to see how it would do with a car right behind us in this spot. So we were kind of jammed between the two, but unfortunately we don't have that. So it's got plenty of space to kind of go over the lines and even itself out here. But we do have a curb in front of us that it needs to be mindful of. Yeah, you can see here that it actually gave us a little bit of space here, which is nice because now we have some room to actually get out if we need to. So I'll take that. Here's some more uh, parallel spots we could try. We'll try this. There's a sign there, which I'm a little bit sketched by, but.
So it's really like setting itself up here. A lot of spinning. Let's see what it does with this side. It's making me a little nervous. I'm guessing that it sees it. I don't know, I don't know what it thinks it sees right there, but there's nothing there. Okay, no, it doesn't see it anymore. That was weird. I haven't experienced that one before. Thought it saw something that wasn't there. But it corrected, fixed itself. This one's a real <laughs> back and forth and Okay. I mean, it's not a bad parking job. It took way, way too long, but especially for as wide open as it was, but not bad. All right, real quick. This parking lot has terrible outlines on the parking spots. So let's see if we can get Auto Park to actually put us in one of these spots cleanly with really poorly painted lines, almost invisible lines. Like these ones right here, you almost can't see at all. But I mean, it recognizes all of them. All right, let's just try one. Like you can almost see they're disappearing on the camera because it really can't see them. You can tell it's kind of struggling. <laughs> it's doing it, but it's a little bit less precise. It really did need to overcorrect there because there's nothing on the side of us, but I mean, we're dead center again. So it did some goofy stuff, but I mean, we are dead center of these lines, even though it can't even see these ones over here. Nice. All right, so what parking lot is tighter than the back lot at a car dealership? So I drove all the way to work just so I could pull into the back lot here and uh, try and fit into one of these parking spots. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but over here we've got, um, trucks and they're all parked kind of cattywampus everywhere and uh, there's a spot right here but it's pretty compact so let's see what the tesla actually does to kind of navigate around some of this stuff so we'll go ahead and uh pick that spot there it's even hard to pick it and we'll let it do its thing so i mean there's cars just parked everywhere it's kind of wedging itself between this Suburban and this uh, Chevy Silverado work truck here. I'm a little worried about... Wow, that was so close. Wow, it got close to that. I had my foot hovering over the brake. That's how nervous I was. But it had room and it cleared it. And it looks like we're going to make it happen here. Whew. Really putting the well-being of my Tesla out on a limb for you guys, but it did it perfectly. As you can see here, you know, no issues, right dead center, even with crazy, you know, misaligned cars all over the place really is an impressive system. So what are my final thoughts on auto park? I think it is the best auto parking system probably on the market, at least that I've used. The fact that it doesn't require you to kind of creep along till it finds a spot. You know, you can go a low speed like you would in a parking lot. It's going to show you all the spots. It's gonna populate a bunch of them. You don't have to get right next to it. You don't have to get in perfect alignment like you do in some other systems. It's just not as finicky and particular as other systems. It's pretty wide open. It lets you kind of just drive how you would normally drive in a parking lot. It's gonna give you all the options you could possibly want, perpendicular and parallel. It's just so simple and fluid. The way that it integrates so smoothly into FSD, the whole system, eventually it'll park itself with FSD. 
hopefully. It's just seamless, and that's what I love about it. Now, what are some of the cons? Well, first and foremost, it always backs in. You don't have the option currently to switch it to where you just pull into a spot. It's always going to reverse in. Now, while this may seem like the most practical option for actually getting out of the parking spot, because you don't have to go in reverse, you can just pull out left or right, this can be super inconvenient if you're trying to load the trunk, because it's not going to be easily accessible to the open parking lot. It'll be actually backed up against another car. So kind of a downside, and I find myself not using auto park when I go to the grocery and things like that, because I want to be able to easily access the trunk from the most open area, which is kind of the entrance and exit of the parking lot. Also, you don't have ultrasonic sensors. That, you know, is a con in some ways, and other ways it's fine. Like you saw in all these examples, it did pretty stinking well without having ultrasonic sensors. But there are those really tight situations where it'd be nice to have kind of more finite measurements just to make sure you're not too close to any obstacles in that situation. But Tesla Vision and High Fidelity Park Assist is just getting better and better and better as the updates come out. And then really my only other complaint about Auto Park is just the speed. Now it's been stated that it's going to get faster. I'm not holding my breath for that, but they have said that they're improving the speed. You saw in some examples, it does it really quickly. Some examples, it takes way too long, like that one parallel parking spot that we looked at. The system needs to be faster or at least as fast as a average driver parking themselves. If not, people just won't use it, right? It needs to be quick, it needs to be effective, it needs to be safe. And I think that they can accomplish all of those things. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about Auto Park versus all these other systems. Let's talk about it down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.